Well, good morning and welcome to Blackstone Valley United Methodist Church. We're so glad to have you here with us this morning as we uh, worship together. We'll be presenting our annual Christmas pageant, which this year is called The Meaning of Snowflakes. I think you're really going to enjoy it. And as we begin our worship, let us join our hearts in prayer. With different gifts, with a variety of talents, with an array of interests, we come to worship you, our creating God. We are here to unite our spirits to be made one in Jesus Christ, to be merged in hope as your children. So bless our differences that the unique gifts and perceptions of each may strengthen our oneness. Drawn into your spirit, we give you thanks from our hearts, in the name of the living Christ. Amen. was foremost and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. So our Christmas pageant this year is not your traditional Christmas pageant. You're not going to see angels or shepherds or kings or animals or even the baby Jesus. Instead, you're going to hear a lot about snow. Today's program, The Meaning of Snowflakes, is based on a poem by Holly Girth called The Meaning of Snowflakes. Let us begin by singing In the Bleak Midwinter. Snow had fallen, snow on snow. There is something magical about snow. It's not quite rain and it's not quite ice, but it's somewhere in between. It's ice in a form that is so delicate and fragile it can, it can be fluffy. One little snowflake doesn't mean much, but when hundreds and hundreds of thousands and millions combine, we get a fluffy white blanket of magic. As the snow falls, it muffles sound, bringing with it a sense of peace, a sense of hope that something magical is happening, a sense of joy watching the world around us change from something familiar into something new, 
as the buildings and trees, cars and streets, playgrounds and toys are covered in the fluffy blanket of ice. Snow brings us a sense of love as we gather together with our families and friends to watch the world change. Huddled by windows, sipping cups of hot chocolate, wrapped in blankets and reading books. Many years ago, far longer ago than we can imagine, something else came to change the world. It did not arrive falling from the sky in quiet muffled wishes. It came loudly into the world, kicking and crying. It did not arrive blanketing the buildings, but was itself wrapped in a blanket. Surrounded by family, wrapped tightly and warmly, a tiny baby entered the world. And just like snowfall, he changed the world. Every new snowflake comes to the earth as a picture of our Savior's birth. Let us sing together about the humble stable. We do all kinds of things out of love. We let our brother eat the last piece of Halloween candy because we love him. Or maybe because we just don't like that kind of candy. We give our friends a hug when they're happy and when they're sad. We share food with each other and do chores and sit and talk. We share love in many ways each and every day. We do this with our family, with our friends and with strangers. God loves us as we love each other. God loves us so much that those many years ago, God made a big decision to send Jesus, God's son to earth. Now God is pretty strong and powerful. God could have sent Jesus to us in any way. God could have sent Jesus already grown up, surrounded by lots of servants and expensive toys, tons of food, and all the money he would ever need. But no, God made a different decision. God decided to come into this world just as any other human being, as a tiny, helpless little baby. A baby who wasn't born into a palace with shining gold and tons of toys, but born in the most humble place God could think of, a stable surrounded not by servants, but by sheep and donkeys and goats. When it snows, the world is changed in sometimes tiny ways that we don't notice right away. That baby that was arriving was just another child, as so many before him and after him. But this baby's arrival on earth changed things in tiny ways. Later, he would change the world in giant ways. Today, the once tiny baby is still changing the world. Every new snowflake comes to the earth as a picture of our Savior's birth because they are sent from up above and remind us of God's care and love. Let us sing together about the lowly infant.
What makes us, us? Babies are amazing. They are so tiny when they are first born. New parents, brothers and sisters and grandparents often spend a lot of time looking at them, staring at their tiny fingers and toes with their tiny little nails, their tiny faces with tiny noses and cute little ears, feeling the softness of their skin and smelling the new baby smell. They wonder, what will his personality be like? What will she be like when she grows up? Will she have dad's eyes or grandma's hair? Will he have lo mom's love of music or grandma's knack for cooking? Will he be a lawyer, a teacher, or a minister? Will she be a doctor, a mother, or a businesswoman? Surrounded that winter night by sweet smelling hay, goats and sheep and donkeys, Mary and Joseph stared at their new baby. They looked at his tiny toes and cute nose. They wondered what he would be like when he grew up. They wondered what color his eyes would become and how strong he would be. They looked at their new baby and saw how he was made up of hundreds of tiny, complex little details. And they saw how each one of those things made baby Jesus, baby Jesus. Jesus looks at us today and sees all those details, the things that make us, us. Every new snowflake comes to the earth as a picture of our Savior's birth. Because they are sent from up above, and remind us of God's care and love. Each one is so intricate and small because Christ sees the details of us all. Let us sing of Christmas. Jesus knows us each by name. Have you ever gone out to try to find two snowflakes that are exactly the same? It's hard to do uh, because we can't see the tiny little details with our own eyes. Scientists and researchers have put a lot of thought and time and effort into finding out if this is really true or not. They actually grow snowflakes under microscopes to see what is happening. What they found as of 2014 is that snowflakes have some basic shapes and some variations, but the shapes and variations combine to form trillions of different combinations. So while it may be possible for two snowflakes to be exactly alike, it isn't likely. The final shape depends on how cold it is, how the wind is blowing, how much water is in the air, and lots of other things. Just as two snowflakes are not the same, we aren't the same either. Each and every one of us, even twins, are different. We may do some things the same way or say some things the same way, but we are each our own and each very different from the others. That very difference is what makes us special. And Jesus knows us all each and every one of us. He knows us and he knows our names and who we are. And he calls us to follow him. Every new snowflake comes to the earth as a picture of our Savior's birth because they are sent from up above and remind us of God's care and love. Each one is so intricate and small because Christ sees the details of us all. And just as two are never the same, he knows and calls us each by name. Hear now how Christ holds us in his hands.
Snowflakes need more than just water and wind and cold temperatures to form. The final thing that they need to form is a speck of dust or dirt or just other tiny bit of junk floating around in the air. As the temperature drops, the air can only hold so much water. The water starts to look for a place to go and when it finds the dust, the water is pulled towards the dust. Because the air is so cold, the water doesn't stay a liquid for long. Instead, it freezes into a snowflake around the speck of dirt. The wind blows the tiny speck of dirt and ice until it runs into another drop of water and continues to grow. Finally, when the ice and speck are too heavy, they fall to the ground as a snowflake. When lots and lots of these snowflakes combine, they change the world around us. The edges of things are blurred and softened. The ground is now uniform, the same, all covered with a blanket. The world changes because of the snow, and so do we. We walk more carefully, we dress more warmly, and we drive more slowly. We change because the world around us has changed. It doesn't matter if you're strong or weak, prideful or humble, happy or sad. When the snow falls, you need to pay more attention to how you are walking when you are out in the world. Everyone is equal. When Jesus came to earth, it was like God sending a blanket of snow across our lives. From the specks of our hearts, God's love grew. It crystallized and spread, grabbing the hearts of others. And then it combined with other specks of love and more specks of hope and happiness and even specks of peace. It's a blanket from God and it changes us. We waited a long time for this to happen. Welcome Jesus. Every new snowflake comes to the earth as a picture of our Savior's birth. Because they are sent from up above, and remind us of God's care and love. Each one of is so each one is so intricate and small because Christ sees the details of us all. And just as two are never the same, he knows and calls us each by name. Snowflakes gently cover the world in snow, creating a new canvas on which we can grow. Hope and peace, love and joy we seek now offered to all, the strong and the meek. Today we have made a snowflake. It's a rather large one, but it has a special purpose. To remind us of God's love, of our own uniqueness, of how God knows each and every one of us, and of how we are blanketed by God's grace. Most importantly, the snowflake we made reminds us of what we really celebrate at Christmas, the birth of a tiny baby who changed the world just like snow changes our world today. Every new snowflake comes to the earth as a picture of our Savior's birth. Because they are sent from up above and remind us of God's care and love, each one is so intricate and small because Christ sees the details of us all. And just as two are never the same, he knows and calls us each by name. Snowflakes gently cover the world in snow, 
creating a new canvas on which we can grow. Hope and peace, love and joy we seek, now offered to all, the strong and the meek. So may every snowflake bring Christ to mind, and in every bit of snow may you find a reason to celebrate anew and a reminder of God's love for you. Now please join us in singing Joy to the World. are much like snowflakes. Individually, they're pretty tiny, weightless, silent, but when we gather them together, they have the power to change the way we see the world. So let us pray together. Oh God, we come before you this morning asking for healing for all those who are sick for comfort for those who mourn, for assurance for those who doubt. We pray especially this day for our nation. We pray for a healing of the wounds we have inflicted upon one another, for a rebuilding of trust, for a spirit of compassion that we might work together to build your kingdom here on earth. And so together we pray as Jesus teaches us saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are poor unless God blesses us. We are rich when we offer up all that we have to God. So let us receive our morning offering. O God of blessing and curse, of life and death, grant that we have ears to hear the word of life in Christ with all its stark demand. Enable us to hear good news when Christ asks us to give up our attachment to all earthly values and give us courage to do so. May these gifts be used in this spirit that we may attain your blessing. Amen. And now our worship is ending and our service begins. So go forth into the world in the knowledge that we are God's body. That hope for a new world is the blood that runs in our veins. That the struggle for justice is the beat of our hearts. And that God's promise is the very stuff of which our bones are made. So go forth and praise the God from whom all blessings flow. And all God's people say, Amen. <laughs>